Thanks for tuning back in. I'm Tommy Campbell, still bald, still in my basement, and I just got my son's grade one class photos back, and it's funny how a five-year-old can figure out a normal smile for the camera while Ron DeSantis looks like an animatronic program by Mike Lindell. Donald Trump Jr. was forced to put down his straw and drop his party girlfriend off at the Home Depot paint section to pick up her next layer while he was heckled all the way into his latest court appearance that put Letitia James in top shelf smirk mode. Meanwhile, leaked footage from Elite Strike Force teams Jenna Ellis and Sidney Powell shows more of the ketchup writing on the wall, and lumpy pillow manufacturer gone mad Mike Lindell gets confused about a host on his own network. I'll be getting into all of that, plus by popular demand, a new genuine page from Lauren Boebert's book and more, but first, this. Do you believe, I know you want, but do you believe your dad is in a better position now than the other two times at this point, despite everything you described, to go get to get to the White House? He is, Brian. They absolutely, there's no question about it. And I hear it every day from people on planes and everything else. All right, he's flying every day. That plane claim is as believable as when Ted Cruz claimed flight attendants were hugging him. Ted Cruz is as huggable as a yellow cactus in a dog park. Flight attendants hugging Ted Cruz is as believable as Melania sleeping with Donald Trump. And if a flight attendant actually hugged Ted Cruz, it would be to bid him farewell after being deported back to Canada. Nobody's coming up to Eric on planes, and if they are, this goes against the everyman blue-collar con they've tried to pull for years. Because Eric ain't flying coach, so if folks are approaching him, they are turning left and getting in a lay-flat bed next to whiny Eric and his Kellyanne Conway stunt double wife. It is pouring MAGA tears. Thanks for choosing to spend some time with this one-man show. Laugh along with the awesome people in the comments while I give my takes mocking the latest in stupid and more. When I first heard about a leak tape, I thought it was a tape of leaks, if you know what I'm talking about, the ones with the ladies from Russia that nobody is supposed to know about. This is really cool. Don Jr. arrived at the courthouse greeted with a bigly turnout of supporters. What's that? They were chanting crime family? Okay, roll the clip. Those people are heroes. Now, Don Jr. took the stand with a PowerPoint meeting flipping through Trump properties, which was likely up there with the prestige worldwide pitch in Step Brothers, but heavy in the stupid and absent of the hilarious. Don Jr.'s self-produced real estate montage was as well-received as Ted Cruz at an Astros game and as effective as Rudy Giuliani's hair dye. Nobody doubts there are some decent properties in Trump's portfolio, but to call them Mona Lisa's and claim he's a real estate artist is laughable, especially since he has some spectacular failures, and for years, the buildings, the ones he actually never built, the ones with brand deals, have been jumping ship, as the name Trump is bad for business. The Trump International Hotel in Waikiki has licensed the Trump name, and in 2024, Hilton will rebrand it as the Waikia Waikiki Beach. Each hotel. This case isn't a question about Trump having properties worth some money. It's about fraudulently inflating the value of assets to obtain favorable loans and insurance deals. And you may have seen Letitia smirking in court, and I think it would be tough to contain myself if these people had been attacking me endlessly, and I knew I had them by the diapers and the coke straws. If you haven't seen her recent statement, it is all kinds of awesome. Their first witness was Donald Trump Jr who took the stand to talk about his dad's business. But rather than respond to any legal claim against him and his family, or address the substantial evidence against them, Donald Trump Jr. spent his entire time on the stand talking through pictures of Trump properties. In his sales pitch, Donald Trump Jr. described his father as a real estate artist. He described Trump golf courses as crown jewels. He showed us pictures of apartment building lobbies. He called Mar-a-Lago an American castle. And after spending a full day walking through a marketing presentation to sell us all on the greatness of the Trump Organization, the defendants still did not make a single point to refute the case we brought against them. 
American Castle. Well, a castle is fortified from attack, and Mar-a-Lago's resort is stacked with temporary foreign workers, and members definitely manage to get around the place. And let's not forget that even with Diaper Don's crack security team, a fake Harris easily mingled with the elites, and this was not the first or last time something like this happened. Mar-a-Lago is a target as soft as Trump's depends after three hamburgers, four Diet Cokes, and a handful of Adderall. It's a private club with several public events, dinners, weddings, parties, with no more than a name needed to enter. I'm on the list, let me in. The Mar-a-Lago site even reveals full contact details for a dozen employees and lists of the club's 500 dues-paying members were leaked long ago, giving foreign intelligence the names of potential targets for surveillance, blackmail, or bribes. And if you think, oh, oh, all these wealthy genius people are members. No, members include people like Mike Lindell. For an hour and a half, you got to see that. Then Diamond and Silk, obviously Silk's not there, but she's there in spirit. She's been watching it out. And amazing show. They've been with us for Sil- the no, beginning. Silk is with us. Diamond passed away. But Silk is with the, uh, no, I meant Silk is up there watching, you know. Silk is not up there watching. Silk is still on a show on your network with nobody watching. Um, and, um. Uh, but yeah, Silk is Silk is there live. Yes, I got it. But they've been both here with us since the beginning. Right. Since the beginning. And uh... Uh, he figured it out, kind of. Silk is there live. Diamond is the one that passed away. And Silk is the one who suggested that the vaccine was shedded onto Diamond. And that's how she died. Silk still goes on about Fauci while getting all of her advice on infectious diseases from a pillow manufacturer gone mad and his network's medical expert, who is actually a former chiropractor who now sells diet pills. Thank you. I see every tip from pennies to dollars. They are hugely appreciated and help make this show possible. If you love what I do here and you can afford to help out, throw me a buck with the PayPal link in the pinned comment or drop me a super thanks with this button. And please take two seconds after this video to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. These things are free and help the show grow. Thank you. Let me preface these two clips with one of my favorite drops of all time. And this is an elite strike force team. That the, um, the, the claims and the ability to challenge uh, the election results was essentially over because he said um, to me in a kind of excited tone, well, we don't care and we're not gonna leave. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, the boss, meaning President Trump and everyone understood the boss, um, that's what we all called him. Um, He said the boss uh, is not going to leave under any circumstances. We are just going to stay in power. And I said to him, well, it doesn't quite work that way, you realize. And he said, we don't care. We don't care. And neither did Jenna until the boss's plan failed. Just going to stay in power. Nothing says you love your country like ignoring voters, democracy, and declaring you're just going to stay in power. This clip speaks volumes, and I get a kick out of seeing Jenna with the classic MAGA two-toned look. Gotta have the orange face and the white hands. Like, could they only afford the makeup for the top? I don't get it. There was a big shouting match in which Rudy called me every name in the book, and um, I was the worst lawyer he'd ever seen in his life. Uh, There were no circumstances under which he'd work with me on anything. Mm -hmm. Somewhere out there has to be footage of that, and I hope that one day it leaks. Sydney's lawyering is up there with her fashion choices. But Rudy, come on, when it comes to legal work, pot kettle. Ms. Powell, were you ever around when someone, anyone, told uh, Donald Trump that he had lost the election? Oh, yeah. Who? Uh, Pat Cipollone, Eric Hirschman, Derek Lyons all thought he'd lost. Was that in the December 18th meeting? Yes. What, what was um, President Trump's reaction when, I guess, this cadre of advisors would say, you lost? It was like, uh, well, they would say that and then they'd walk out and he'd go, see, this is what I deal with all the time. Trump couldn't handle the truth and wanted to make his own truth. He's living in his own little reality bubble and wanted to surround himself with only those that would go his way. Do I have the authority to name her special counsel? And Cipollone said, yes, you do. And then somebody said, well, she doesn't have a security clearance. So he looked at Cipollone and he said, do I have the authority to give her a security clearance? And Cipollone said, yes, you do. And then about the third time we went through that scenario, uh, Cipollone, I think, said, 
you can name her anything you want, Mr. President, and nobody's going to pay a bit of attention to it. There is a lot of speculation on why these videos were leaked. Is it to get more defendants to plead guilty? Is it to scare some defendants off? Is it so Trump can control the media? More and more footage will be dropping. And I'm curious, what is your take on why this is happening? What is going on here? I mean, I miss having hair, but if this is the alternative to being bald, I'm good. I am good. I, I can't tell if someone just unclogged the sink at PetSmart or they were sweeping up the scraps of the senior Merkin factory and thought, you know, we could sell this stuff. There's someone that will buy it. Ron DeSantis continues his quest to figure out how to program his face, mouth, and tongue to work like a somewhat normal human in this clip from Michael Beatty. Not sure if the lift boots have shifted his brain or what, but it's like when his handler suggested he flirt with the audience, he thought blowing them a French kiss would be the answer. Honestly, after we get the George Santos, Katara Goldberstein DNA test back, can we do one on Kenneth Copeland and Ron DeSantis? Because something's going on there. For those new to the show, I'm glad you found me. Thank you. For a year, I've been reading a genuine page from Lauren Boebert's book. This really is a ton of fun. I only do it once a week, and it's been pretty wild. Let's get back to it. I felt I needed to get Mountain Dew and Jason out of Lady Buns before my husband took the damp wad of reclaimed gambled hamster cash from my purse and decided to hit the back room with the broken disco ball and crunchy leather chair to toss bills at one of my night-hot co-workers. I am all for my man having a good time. I know his old corncob face hole has her own fun, but his wild ways have caused a stir in the past. My manager Craig warned Jason several times that lobbing bills at the ladies is appreciated, but tightly folding them into tiny paper airplanes and trying to hit a bullseye with his dollar darts is not the kind of tip a gal wants. I considered Craig's dance place to be much like an escape room, and I even tried to convince him to do some Sunday all-ages hours, and a few girls agreed to dial the outfits to a respectable Hooters level. I know some people shy away from places that serve hot wings in date night attire, but I was born in the home state of those orange shorts, and getting a free frisbee from there was a childhood rite of passage. Before the world went all woke, they used them for the kids' meal plates. It saves on dishwashing and gives you a microwavable toy for the park to let people know whose mom has a super cool boyfriend. Stan Lane may have not been around, but Bruce was, and he was really cool and hot. This could be the first no escape room and Craig could corner some of that birthday party market. A true family destination, I figured we could borrow a claw machine from Mike Lindell and buy some of those pinball things and then train some farm animals to talk and play instruments like the ones at Chuck E. Cheese's. He could just lock people in until they were out of money and then dump them in the alley next to the guy with the cardboard fort who I may or may not have had a thing with. Better get that checked. It was like a fairy tale. If you've enjoyed this genuine page from Low Rent Boozburb's book, let me know in the comments and I'll see about reading another page sometime soon. If you just let President Trump win, none of this would be happening. Mega tears. To be a one-man comedy show, you have to actually be funny. Mega tears. I don't care which boots he wears or not, I'm still voting for Ron DeSantis. Mega tears. Donald Trump Jr. was forced to put down his straw and drop his party girlfriend off at the... <laughs> Mar-a-Lago is a target as soft as Trump's depends after three hamburgers, four Diet Cokes, and a handful of Adderall, and then dumped them on the street next to the guy with the cardboard for the alley, who I may or may not have a thing with. Someone unclogged the sink at BetSmart, or they were sweeping up scraps at the senior Merkin factory. <laughs> and you may have seen Letitia Smeet... Schmirking, Schmir Schmir smoking a pancake. I am all for my man having his fun. I know his old corn cob face <laughs> has her own fun. In case some here think I look tired, it's been a tiring week. I had a nearly 24 hour power outage and it happened at the same time that we got a new friend. For those that have followed me for years know that my pug passed nearly two years ago. And well, we finally, we finally got another one. And uh, yeah. It is just ridiculously cute, um, but uh, getting used to um, the new house and the friends and uh, sleeping in a strange place. So uh, doing my best. So say hello. Hello.
Thanks so much for watching. Help me out by joining us in the comments, sharing this video with a friend, and following me on social media. I am a one-man show here from script to screen, the editing, even the graphics. Please throw me a tip with the easy PayPal link or hit that super thanks button and be sure to check out my mugs that go great with those MAGA tears. I am a stand-up comedian, I've played in 35 countries, and I've toured with Jim Jeffries for nearly 10 years. I have three albums and a brand new EP from my opening set on Jim's latest Netflix special. You can stream these on Spotify, Apple Music, or catch them on SiriusXM. Thanks for helping me make this show possible. Life's short. Be cool. Be kind. Take care.